Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com, and today we're going to talk all about Project Red, or I should say the Truth Ear Zero Red, the new $55 collab in your monitor from a good friend, Critical. Is it any good? Well, let me answer that right now and say yes, of course it's good. You already know it's good. You don't actually even need to watch this video. Stamp of approval and all of that good stuff. But the thing is, this is also a product that means something to the audio community, or at least it should mean something. And so we need to talk about that. Now, just a quick disclaimer, as we get going here, this unit was sent over by Shenzhen Audio, but of course nobody has paid me to say anything in particular about this IEM, and all thoughts here are my own. So to me, the interesting thing with the Zero Red is how it compares to the regular Truth Ear Zero right here, which is Krin's previous collab. But we need to also back up and talk a little bit about what this is and why it's also important. And get ready, because this is where we open a can of worms to find the countless squabbles over the Harman in-ear target, yes, that old chestnut, and this is where we get into the endless quagmire of vitriolic mudslinging and proclamations of science being thrown around to get that real deep level of confidence that we all love. And I'm here for all of it. Like, of course I'm going to talk about this. So if you've been living under a rock for the last year, the infamous IEM reviewer Critical has released the Truth Ear Zero, a two dynamic driver in-ear that went for essentially the latest Harman in-ear target. We can refer to it from here on out as Harman IE. Now there are of course bound to be those who say, but wait, it didn't actually perfectly achieve it, or it didn't match over 90% of the predicted preference to sufficiently count as Harman, yada yada. Okay, sure. But it is still very close, and for Harman fans, this IEM has been important because it's a Harman-like tuning at a very low price point. And of course, that was the original intention behind the Zero. In this case, I've decided to go full Harman. However, Critical, the man himself, has been an outspoken critic of Harman IE. In an interview with Dr. Sean Olive, the legendary audio scientist behind this research, Critical put forward his theory as to why the research turned out the way that it did for IEMs. As an IEM person, mm. I need to talk to you about Harman in-ear. And, well, I'll give me some criticisms of Harman in-ear. So one of the big things is that a lot of people, um, they don't really like it. And Critical's theory is that the starting point for this research had too much ear gain in the upper mids and the treble. It's too bright, too shouty. It's too much, it's too bright, it's too shouty. And listeners in this study were only able to adjust the bass rather than bass and treble, which is what they were able to do for the over-ear studies that were done. And the idea is that if they'd been able to adjust the bass and the treble, we'd end up with a different result. That's a theory, but yeah, yeah it's a theory. Now, I was there in the room when he said this to Dr. Olive, and I remember thinking, wow, that's bold. Like, Kryn, you did not pull any punches there, did you? Have you no respect for the man? Miraculously, everybody got along. Turns out meeting people in person is a hell of a drug. But I think Critical's point, or at least his theory, is an important one to consider. And I will link that interview in the description below. There are, of course, other theories that may explain Harman IE's mixed reception, like the one suggested by Jude from HeadFi, which has to do with the coupler being used and its limitations. And you know what? There really is something to that. Um, and I will I will need to get into that because that is a, an entirely different video. But in any case, if this is all super confusing to you, think of it like this. The common attitude by many in the enthusiast community is that Harman over ear good, Harman in ear less good. And then Critical himself comes out with a collab where he intentionally tuned it as close as possible to the reference curve that he himself has criticized. What an absolute madman. And as mentioned, that was the original zero right here. So this is how the zero measured relative to Harman 2019. And in fact, our particular unit here seems to match even closer to Harman and scores better on their predictive model than even Critical's own reference unit. So I guess we won the unit variation lottery with that one. And I wasn't that into it either. And all the criticisms that reviewers have had of Harman IE, well, I've had them too. And now we have the zero red which is the same configuration as the Zero, the same shell design, the same everything. I guess the cartoon shot on the box is different, but that goes without saying. But more importantly, it's tuned to be closer to Critical's own IEF target, or at least for key elements of it. And I'm pleased to say that it's good and sounds much better than the original Truth Ear Zero. It's really not even close to me at least. But of course, I am just one person, and maybe for everybody else, they actually prefer the original Zero. This is what I was sort of thinking about at the time. The preference research does, after all, indicate that it is more likely to be preferred. And if you've heard both of these, let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I'm very curious about that. But as it happens, at CanJam SoCal last year, Critical brought one of his prototypes, and while it wasn't exactly the final tuning, it was fairly close to the final result. And for those of us who had a chance to listen to that red prototype, 
Everybody except for one from that group preferred the red over the original zero. Of course, there's an element of novelty to this, and it's not exactly a controlled situation, nor anything statistically significant or anything like that. But to me, it was at least kind of like an indicator that, you know what, maybe other people hear these the way I do as well. Now, there are absolutely issues with the concept of reviewer-determined reference targets. Like when it comes to showing data on a graph, no reference curve should be determined by the preferences of a single individual. Like that sort of breaks the whole concept of a reference curve to begin with. It needs to be based on something a little bit more concrete than that. And this is something that we've ranted about at length in a previous live stream on this channel. And I'm sure I will continue to rant about it. But there's no reason why products can't be tuned like that. This is the great thing about these collabs. You get a sense of what the person you're watching or reading enjoys. And I think this is how we should think about the red as well. So let's not talk about the actual product. It took me a while, but we got there. Perceptually, this sounds reasonably close to neutral with a bass boost. And I think that's a desirable kind of sound for many people. Here you can see the measurements from both the Gross and the BNK5128. Just keep in mind that we're using the official Gross RAO402 for this, which isn't comparable to any of the clone couplers you may see being used in the wild. And as always, there will be a thread in the description if you want to see all of the data on this. Now, when overlaying the two, the red and the zero, you can see that the red has significantly less ear gain, meaning less upper mids and treble, and then a bass boost that gradually rises the lower it goes into the sub bass. In fact, the bass on the red is just awesome. <laughs> this is probably the key feature about this IEM. The bass shelf is low down enough to the point where it's really sub bass focused, meaning you get all the thump without it sounding, you know, out of control or bloated or loose or anything like that. I think actually far too commonly the bass shelf in IEMs is too high up, um, and with this one it's not, so that's dope. But for the rest of the tuning, it sounds clear, but also not overly glaring and shouty or fatiguing like the original Zero was. I do still think that the upper mids could use a little bit of extra refinement here, in particular at around 4 kilohertz. Uh, but this is a budget IEM, and for that it's really quite good. If I had one critique, it would be that the upper treble has a bit of extra zing to it. Like there's a slight peak for me at around 11 kilohertz. I think it shows up somewhere at around 12k on the BNK, um, so maybe that's what I'm noticing. Now for the subjective analysis, or the technicalities if you will, uh, it's also competent. It's not the most detailed or spacious sounding thing out there, and I don't think this is going to supplant anything like the Dusk or other IEMs kind of like that. Like, I'm hesitant to say that this IEM makes a lot of other value kings redundant because this space is incredibly competitive. So, for example, the Truthier Hexa is still a fantastic IEM, and I'd still rank it a little bit higher for some of these subjective qualities, except for the bass, of course. For the non-sound related aspects, the red is basically the same as the zero. The cable and carry pouch are nothing special. You get a series of tips. Interestingly, two different types of silicon tips. So you want to swap around and see what you prefer, and they really do make a difference, at least they did for for me. And for the best fit, of course, I recommend using the foam tips. I find the red to be comfortable. I've used it outside on a number of walks and I didn't have any issues with it falling out of my ears or anything like that. The nozzle isn't too big either and there's really nothing in the on the back of the shell that juts out and sticks into my ear in a weird place like I often find with other IEMs. Critical has also included a 10 ohm adapter. Using this boosts the bass even more. So if you're a bass head, just throw on this adapter and it will be more bassy. Here you can see the differences in the frequency response, both with and without the adapter. I prefer it without the adapter, but you know, I know there are a lot of bass heads out there and uh, if that sounds like you, then this is the way to go. So let's wrap this up here. In my view, the RED is absolutely a solid product at its price point, and as our IEM specialist Precogvision has said, the IEM market has become a race to the bottom, and I think Critical has a real contender on his hands here. But to me, the bigger topic here is whether or not the RED sounds meaningfully better than the Zero to, you know, the majority of people. And if this is a common trend when it comes to the reception of both of these IEMs, then I think that's important. I think we need to look into that. And regardless of whether you accept Critical's theory about the issues with Harman IE, or if it's to do with the coupler limitations, or something else, we need to look into this topic further to get some consensus. But here's the good news. Now these two products exist, the Zero and the Red, and the price point is low enough to where you could theoretically get both, and then decide for yourself which one you prefer, and that should give you an indication of which direction direction to go when you're considering just IEM purchases in general. And who knows, maybe most people actually do prefer the level of ear gain you find 
with the original Zero, even if the I Am Enthusiast community does not. This is effectively a way for everyone to decide for themselves which style of tuning they prefer. And I get that you could also do this before with different products, like the other Zero from Sal Notes uh, is something that you could have used, you know, that's kind of similar to this one as well. And you could have also used other Harman tuned IEMs, but these two have the same shell design and driver configuration. And I kind of think that that matters. I also think a comparison like this is worth doing when it comes to future research, since Critical's popularity has made this target curve, the IEF neutral target, somewhat ubiquitous and it's super popular for how a lot of IEMs are being tuned these days. And I think it's worth figuring out how that stacks up in a controlled environment, whether to validate it or invalidate it. And I have every intention of looking into this further. We can use these two products in blind real world tests to see how people react to them or do something with a more thoroughly designed listening experiment since the shell again is the same. If you'd like to see a video on that, let me know in the comments. Also consider subscribing if that sounds interesting to you. But that basically does it for this video. I don't really have anything else to say. If you guys are looking for more information on any of this stuff, check out our written reviews up on headphones.com in the audio file section there and join us on Discord. That's where you'll be able to chat with me and other like-minded audio folks. And that does it for me. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.